So, like, Tom Richmond drawing a chair, you can tell it's a Tom Richmond chair, or Jack Davis drawing a chair, if that's a Jack Davis chair. Whereas, if you're, try if you're just using default tools, and you're kind of just drawing the same stuff, it's not that distinct from every other artist using a Cintiq and Photoshop and all that. So I can't stress enough how important it was for me to use these tools to figure out how to reproduce my, my hand style on the tablet. Um, I'm going to do a, a... This is the comic strip character that I do. Uh, he's called Ginger Megs. He's like an Australian version of... Dennis the Menace, I guess, is, uh, it's been running for 94 years, so it um, runs in about 34 countries, um, and he, there's been four other artists before me, and he's this little red-headed kid, and he's always getting into trouble, and uh, I took it over about seven or eight years ago, I guess, and uh, I've been, been drawing it ever since. I do six daily strips and one Sunday strip every week. So one strip for every single day of the year. And they used to take literally half a day each. For like a Sunday strip would take a couple of days. And now I can do a Sunday strip in three hours. Um, which is crazy. If I if my predecessors knew how quick it was for me to do a Sunday strip now they would be spewing. They they would hate it. Because it really was uh, a big laborious job um, to do a Sunday strip. A Sunday strip is like three decks, it's half a page, it's full color, it's a lot of detail, and uh, it takes a long time. So, uh, having this kind of technology available, and I on the road I use a Cinti Companion Hybrid, which is the smaller version of this, and it just works as a tablet. I can, I can work from anywhere. It makes it very flexible and very fast. So, uh, what, what I did to Working digitally is one thing, but having a digital audience is another thing. A digital audience, particularly digital natives like the I generation, they're used to looking at content on a phone or a tablet or a, or a computer screen. So when you're making comics, you're not really... You used to just be making them from print. Now you're making them from every different kind of screen. So everything from your line width to the spatial, you know, the distance between certain things, the negative space, it all matters so that when you work on a, when you, the work shows up on a, say, an iPhone, it's gonna, it's gonna look good. Otherwise, it's all gonna look cramped and it reduces down and there's, there's too much detail. Um, what I did was I created a, I guess, a mobile only site called iMegzy. It's iMegzy.com. And uh, it's basically comic strips in the form of Instagram. So you just scroll down to see one strip to the next. And uh, I, I was watching my nephew use his mum's iPhone and he just intuitively, he was eight months old and he's a baby he, and he knew intuitively to scroll on a screen to see more pictures. So I saw that and kind of had an epiphany of, all right, well, if I have the comic strip, instead of going left to right, as it has been for a hundred years, more than a hundred years, um, if I switch it so that each panel is below the, below the next, um, and it actually works on a phone. And it, and it doesn't squish it either. You know, you've got plenty of room in a panel now to see all the background detail and everything in it. So um, that's something that is kind of recent. Um, the actual website is gingermegs.com. But uh, it's a big learning curve working digital, especially if you started out, uh, started out working traditionally. But once you got it, you got it.